Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Back with a red door. Red door. Hello to our <laughs> hello to our friends virtually there. <laughs> oh, whose heart feels full right now? Mine. Looking around, yes. Welcome to Chapag Valley Bibles Church first outdoor service, I think. Happy Father's Day to the fathers. Happy church anniversary. We think it's the 24th. It's like being at my house. It's the same thing. Uh, so thank you everyone for just kind of following all those guidelines. We know that there's a lot wearing the masks coming in. And so in case you didn't see, there is the cute little house um, for your offering. There um, is Purell back there. There's bug wipes if you end up needing those and bug spray and, and all of that extra masks and all that. So we have that for you. Um, you, if those of you who don't know the bathroom is, you walk into the house, go a little bit, and it's on your right, and there's um, soap, obviously, and, and wipes and all that as well. So this is just the housekeeping item. So um, thank you again for being here. So Michael is going to sing a couple of songs for us, and I know it feels so restrictive, but just for this service, as we're trying to figure out what's best for everyone, so either hum or sing in your hearts, um, just enjoy as that music of the Lord washes over you. Um, he's going to sing a song, and then I'm going to read a psalm, and then we'll have another song, and then Jeff is going to be preaching for us today. Okay. All right, I'm going to sing our church's anthem, which is really uh, it's been building to, to be that for a while now, and so we're going to do Be Thou My Vision, even though we did it recently uh, via Zoom or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to use my credit card as my pick because I lost my pick. So it's going to have a special, a special flavor to it, I'm sure. But um, we all know these words. It's so good. Um, I know, we think you and I talk about, or any of the musicians, you know, you, we all get these songs in our head, and then they're with us the entire week. And to me, that's very valuable to be singing as we do our job, whatever it is. But, um, so we'll just sing along in your heart with me. I'll try to sing clearly so we can really get into these beautiful words. Do you know this song was an old Irish bar tune back in the 14th century or 15th century? And then some minister in the 1600s heard it and put words to it. And then it got translated again. And so this song has real history, which I think is awesome.
follow better. We want to listen more. We want to really long to be touched by you, God. We open our hearts to you right here, right now. Mm. We're so grateful that you are right here amongst us. Under these trees, Lord, that you made in this gorgeous world. We praise you, God. We praise you and thank you. We praise you forever, Lord. And that is in the name of Jesus, our King. Amen. Should stand a little closer. Okay. Uh, this morning, I am going to read Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They swarmed around me like bees, but they died out as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this land with which we can have the service. We thank you for everyone that's here and everyone that is joining us from afar. You have given us a great gift, O oh Father. Praise your name. We give this service over to you. Amen. 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 And I should sing the song, This is the day. This is the day, but that's really a sing-along, so we'll save that for um, the next episode. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, the next song I had in mind was, was this, but I really feel like singing this. Abba, Father, I love Come to worship you. Say that we love you. We lift our hands up to you. We come to worship you. 
our loving Father, we come to worship you. We say that we love you, we lift our hearts up to you, we come to worship you. Go for it, Jeff. We want to hear. <laughs> Father, bless our brother. Fill his heart with your love and your word. And we anticipate your touch right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for that Father's Day song. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that was right on. Yeah. Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Chapog Valley Bible Church. Those of you from afar and those of us present, this is awesome. Yeah. This is really, there, there's so much to celebrate here today. You know, we have God, our Heavenly Father. Then we have earthly fathers or people in our lives that encouraged us and exhorted us and gave us a Father's love. Then we have the longest day of the year. <laughs> Yep, there's more light today than at any other day. Awesome. So it's really an awesome time. But there is one very particular celebration that we have is in 1996 on Father's Day, this church began. So this is our 20, what, fourth anniversary. Yeah, 24 years. It started in Harry's living room. <laughs> we had a brother named Bob Liptak. He was playing guitar a lot like what you do. And wow. Michael preached from Genesis 12, where Abraham is, is hearing from God, go forth to the land that I will show you. And that's how our church began, right in, right in that little beautiful living room. So anyway, Amen. much to celebrate. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> we have Sunday school too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so, so we do celebrate the Lord of glory this morning. And the big topic that I wrestled with is how did our church get established and continue for 24 years throughout all of the ups and downs that we've had most recently this time with COVID. And yet look how we have stayed together. We stayed together. We, we prayed together. I mean, it's been fantastic. We worshiped together. All because people rose up and were filled with the Holy Spirit to do what they're going to do. So that's why we're still here. You know, the, God will bless our experience through his grace. Amen. And the biggest grace we'll ever have is the Lord Jesus. Amen. He is, in John 14, he is he is full of grace and truth and john 1 16 from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace so let's pray father we thank you for the beauty of this day we thank you for our history that you've written in your own sovereign hand we thank you for all the folks that have come into our midst and served and glorified you and Lord, we're just so grateful that our church lives on because in Christ we have grace. Lord, we're not here because of clever advertising or programming. We're here because Jesus is Lord of this church and in his grace we live. So thank you, Lord, for all that you've done through your beloved son. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to look at the uh, nature of our church, first of all. Um, and the verse that came to mind is from Matthew, and that's chapter 11, 28, 29, where Jesus says, Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, 
for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And that verse 29 is, to me, captured the aroma of our church, why we're still here. You know, the true church takes up the yoke of Christ. There's a lot of things that can happen in a church, but the true church will take up that yoke and be in a yoke with him in all of their time together, in all of their ministry. And I really believe that God has brought that into our midst, that we are in the yoke of Christ. And there's three things that come out of that, being in that yoke. And I think this is why we still exist. He says, learn of me. Take up my yoke and learn of me. What is that? Well, that's studying the word of God, isn't it? Yeah. You know, that's the written word of God. Jesus is the living word of God. So we learn of Christ in this church. Every time this pulpit's been filled, it's the word of God preached. Every time Sunday school was taught, it wasn't social stuff. It was the word of God. So our church has been obedient in that. And that's one big reason why we still are here. Because everything else passes away, doesn't it? Everything. So that's part of it. The second thing is, it's, it's amazing. Of all the things that we could learn of Christ, he says, learn of me, he says, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. We learn the humility of Christ. He could have said, learn of my power and my magnificence and my glory. And we do. We do. <laughs> Sometimes we got to yell. But, <laughs> but here he highlights gentle and lowly. Yeah. And he, he has told us in this verse to learn of, of, of my humility, says Jesus. How I humbled myself before my father. And, and was so useful in his hands in that humility. And that, I just, that just touched me. And I think our church has a handle on that humility. There's a, there aren't loud voices here. There's not arrogance here. There is gentleness, lowliness, and humility. And that is why we still are together. Because we love each other. With the love of Christ, it's a humble love. It does mighty things, but it's birth in humility. So I think we have learned this through the years. And finally, in that yoke of Christ, we learn how to pray. We learn to pray as Christ did, not my will, but thine. That's what he prayed, and that was emblematic of all of his prayers. He just wanted the Father's glory, and he sent the Holy Spirit that that would continue even as he ascended into heaven. So I, I really think that those three things, learn of me, learn of my humility and learn to pray that's why we are still here i the holy spirit has held us to those disciplines year in and year out and so we have so much to be grateful for because how does that verse finish i am gentle and lowly in heart and what you will find rest for your soul every person that's come into our midst that is the thing that they're looking for i mean the world is in chaos <laughs> more now than ever and so people are hungry for rest a place where they can come and just say oh thank god i'm not in this alone you know there's something that is out there there's someone that's out there that is going to carry me through this thing and i can relax in the lord so it's the preeminence of jesus himself in our midst that's the only durable source of spiritual rest that there will ever be he's durable I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's never going to wear out. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> you know, the, the, world will, the world will wear out like a garment and be rolled up, but God goes on forever. So, and whenever Jesus is preeminent, that his presence is there and his peace always follows. You can't have the presence of Christ without the peace of Christ. And you can't have the peace of Christ without the presence of Christ. So there is rest that we have. And every Sunday, when we were gathering on virtual and listening to Michael and listening to Cynthia and Denise and, and whoever was preaching, there was rest there. It was awesome. Right there in your own home, you know? So, so much good stuff. So these three virtues really 
were sewn into our church from its very, very beginning. Um, Pastor Michael and Tansy Phillips, uh, they modeled these wonderfully. They were, throughout their 21 years of ministry here, the light of Christ shone through them softly, gently, and beautifully. And those of you that knew them well, you know that that is true. And they would minister to people in awful situations. We have no idea of all the things that God did through them as broken people came to them. And they, they in humility, prayed with them. And they, they ministered to them. And they counseled them. And their broken spiritual bodies were mended by that beautiful, humble ministry of prayer and intercession that God just poured through them. They're the reason that, that, that I came to this church and my wife and I. And we come from broken, dysfunctional situations. And here was rest because it started right with the pastor and right with Harry. I mean, I, I look at Harry and Michael. They were my mentors when I was, you know, 30-something. <laughs> you know, I, I needed men of God in my life. You know, now I'm 67. You know, I'm an old. But, you know, <laughs> these guys are still alive and speaking into my life with their endurance for the Lord. They haven't quit. They haven't given up. They're still running the race. So, yeah, so much to be grateful for. Uh, but, Mike, it all started with, with Michael and Tansy. And uh, so I want to just finish this speaking of humility itself as a virtue. And I was brought to um, James chapter 4. So if you have a Bible, and I've got my <laughs> tattered scriptures here from... Uh, chapter 4, James chapter 4. In this chapter, James is looking at a world that is enslaved with passions for money and wealth and power and sex and everything that we see in social media and the newspaper. And, you know, he says in, in verse 4, unfaithful creatures, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. But I want to focus on 5 through 10. So here we go. Or do you suppose it is in vain that the scripture says, God yearns jealously over the spirit which he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, Purify your hearts, you men of double mind. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to dejection. Humble yourselves, therefore, before the Lord, and he will exalt you. <clears throat> so, in these verses... So, in these verses, we're looking at um, humility and God you know, in verse 5 he's saying God yearns jealously over our spirit and that root word for jealousy in there is zeal you know we are fashioned to be the temple of the Holy Spirit every living creature per a person human is fashioned to be the temple of the Holy Spirit that's why God is zealous that's why we have dignity you know, we're created in God's spiritual image. And so he is he's zealous for everyone to come to know him the way that we know him in Christ. So that's where humility comes in. How is that ever going to happen? Well, verse 6 says, but he gives us more grace. And that grace, as I've already said, that's Christ. That's how we become children of God. That's how we become temples of the Holy Spirit. It's by no other means than coming to Christ and, and receiving him. And what happens when that instance, there's three spiritual things that unfold. And you can see it in the verses. It's <clears throat> in humility, your spiritual vision is cleared by the light of Christ. In that place, 
you can see the spiritual landscape around you. You know, it says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, when you're before Christ in humility, you can see where de the devil is coming into your life to attack you and destroy you. you know, and then draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Well, you know what? God never would be approached by an arrogant person. <laughs> he doesn't know. He, he, he opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. So in humility, we can draw near to God in Christ and receive all of the tremendous benefits of that spiritual vision. We can navigate our life in humility. You know, it's, it's always the case that arrogance fractures relationships. Arrogance breaks any chance of true fellowship because it's modeled after Satan himself. You know, he said, I, I will ascend to the throne of God. I will be like the most high. I, 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 I. The more I you hear, the more satanic it is. So that's the beauty of our church is that we are not an I church. We are in Christ. The grace, the humility of Jesus has been our foundation. And it's we. <laughs> Thank God for that. So spiritual vision is cleared. The second thing is humility before God. Christ consciousness overwhelms self-consciousness. And if you look at the rest of those verses in James, I mean, they're, they're tough. You know, be... You know, be wretched, be mourn, and weep, you know? Cleanse yourself. You know, what's that? That doesn't sound like much fun. But what's happening there? Well, in the love, in the perfect love of God, he is saying, I will give the mind of Christ to you if you humble yourself. And you will be able to see your sin the way you've never seen it before. And because you trust the perfect love of God, He's going to use everything that Satan has thrown against you and turn it to good. And you will be sanctified because you've humbled yourself before the God of glory and have confessed your sin and repented of it. And guess what? Forgiveness comes like an avalanche of grace on us. And we're built up. And we can say, done with that. I'm on to the next part of this journey. So praise God for Christ consciousness. That's what we have when we're humble. Again, arrogance will never bring you Christ consciousness. It's always going the wrong direction. So God has done that in our church. And I think, I mean, I just celebrate that today. <laughs> There's a lot of Christ consciousness going on around here. And so, and then the third thing is humility establishes the true platform for prayer. And that is very special. I think this is where Michael and Tansy, again, were so huge. Because in that humble moment, your soul is arrested. When you humble yourself before the glory of God, you know, like a day like this, or the clouds and the blue sky, I mean, it, it, it transfixes you. You're like held by God's glory. And you can almost hear Psalm 46 10 saying be still and know that I am God So that is what we have as the foundation for our prayer life if you open your prayer every time with Dwelling upon your problems and so and so disappointed me and God help me in this mess. You're not going anywhere Fix your eyes on Christ. Look at the glory of God. Look at his majesty. Look at his sovereignty. Look at his holiness and we will be enabled to pray with Holy Spirit zeal because the Holy Spirit is the essence of prayer. And that's what we had. And all the prayer meetings that we ever had in Michael and Tansy's house, it was always, always drenched in the Word of God, drenched in humility, and drenched in the glory of God. Amen. And we capture that, again, in video. I mean, when, when Rebecca, I love your face, by the way. In those videos, there's just this glow. It was, it was so great. But that foundation of humility is indeed the only foundation for prayer that, that we can ever have. Because that's when the Holy Spirit has free reign to pray in the Spirit. So, so that's really all I have. Uh, we have, uh, I just had to put a shout out to a scripture that like, like deal out my vision. You know, all these, it's been almost three years now since Michael and Tansy left. 
And there was a verse that came through Cynthia back in the beginning, and I'll never forget this, and that is 2 Chronicles 20, 12. And if you look at that chapter, that's Jehoshaphat. He's crying out to the face, to, crying out uh, to God in the face of overwhelming armies from Moab and Ammon and Syria coming against Israel. And he, he cries out. I love this. He says, O Lord, God of our fathers, art thou not God in heaven? Dost thou not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? In thy hand are power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Well, what's happening there? Well, in humility, Jehoshaphat is beholding God. And he is transfixed by that. And he says, we are powerless against this great multitude that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And so Jehoshaphat was speaking to the whole nation. He's saying, we're turning from all the fear, anguish, clamor of the moment, and we're turning unto you, Lord God, to behold your transcendent glory. And we are arrested in your presence. And we will go forth in faith and power because you will not fail or forsake us. And so that's a place that the Holy Spirit can really move. And he moved then all these months. We've had the pastor search committee seeking and praying. And all of us have been praying for them. And uh, Michael and Tansy have been praying for us. Isn't it awesome that we're having this time to remember them right where they live? Yeah. Right in their side yard? So... <laughs> Father's Day. Yeah, on, on Father's Day. So praise God for our heritage. Praise God for Michael and Tansy. How all they taught us in the Holy Spirit about humility and prayer. Um, this is our birthright. You know, the title of this message is Humble Glory. And that's really what we have. God has been glorified through our humility. And we have his glory as we behold him in humility. So it's just keeps going around and around and gets better and better so let's just continue to walk in humility before him let's pray earnestly in the power of the holy spirit as god exalts us as we humble ourselves and our church will continue until our work is done and may we walk in these disciplines for another 24 years <laughs> i'll be 91 by the way <laughs> so let, let's pray god we are so thankful Lord, you have schooled us in marvelous things of the Holy Spirit all these years. Lord, we do thank you for Michael and Tansy and just the beautiful uh, rendition of your grace and glory and humility that we had in them. Bless them right now where they are. They're still praying. They're still ministering. Lord, what a heritage we have. And we thank you for the Ongs and where they have been in our church. And I just praise you for the way that they've ministered here. Lord, we thank you for, for all of the folks that have stepped up in these days. Lord, we know that as we walk together in humility, you will continue to build our church along that guideline that you have. Nobody knows your mind except you. But we surrender ourselves in humility and pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Be glorified in all of it. We ask, amen. You bet. Oh, God. <laughs> it brought to mind something to me. Um, I, I've been trying to learn some of the Hebrew alphabet, and the fourth letter is the letter Dalet, and it, um, it means door. But what all the letters have pictures associated, as well as a musical note, as well as a number. So each letter of the Hebrew alphabet is, is very, very rich. But the fourth letter is Dalit, and it means bow, to be bowed down, to be humble. And it also means door. So it means like we bow and then the door is open. It's like this picture of being humble, like you talked about, that, you know, it's like, it's, and it's right in the heart of the Hebrew alphabet, you know, so it's, it's just a rich image, and I just wanted to share that.
still. Father, our hearts are before you, God. 